Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hello, welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week I wanted to speak about releasing fear, which is definitely a huge part of the Ascension process, let alone the awakening. And if we're going to free humanity from this structure, we should understand why is it here if we are love? What is it, where did it come from? And why do we continue to agree with its presence on the planet? How does that work? Well, let me start at the beginning. So duality is a natural part of creation. It's all part of Source's question, who am I, what am I, let me explore more of what I am. And when Source separates part of itself, in order to experience separation at all, it has to take part of its consciousness and plant it in a specific place, let's say, it's not actually a place, but just for illusion's sake, it takes part of its consciousness, plants it in a place and surrounds it with a void in order to create separation. And that void is filled by creations that then create within that void in the illusion of separation. I hope that isn't too crazy technical, but if you can just imagine a, a taking a piece of yourself that you want to disconnect from completely, and you take it out of your consciousness, and then you surround it with a void to give the illusion that it's separate from yourself. And that creates duality within that void. So you have the opposite of what you truly are. So if source is truly love, unconditional love, then fear would be the opposite. And fear is what creates that duality. It's not actually the love that creates the duality, it's the fear, the, the illusion of separation. And it's just a way to experience separation from the creator. A creator creates beings to explore an aspect of itself. And the void then becomes the universe that that one verse, there are many universes, but ours explores separation from unconditional love. Our universe is actually based on the harmonic frequency of unconditional love. So in order to experience separation within this universe, there has to be that, that void created where there's a separation from the true light and it creates a duality which exists up through several dimensions until eventually uh, you ascend to the point where you're just experiencing oneness again. So the opposite of love is fear. Uh, the cre this creates a duality of highs and lows, heights and depths of self or source. Fear is the absence of source, an absence of oneness, a connection to all that is. There are degrees of source light in creations. So you're not all light or all dark. There are variations of that throughout the lower dimensions in order to explore what it's like to be completely separated from source and then return to it. And the lessons then empower you in the higher realms to embrace the wisdom of the creator and really get to know what source is all about. Now, are you old universe, this is a very old universe, has birthed entire races that explored the depths of separation to the point where they became incapable of holding source light at all. Uh, this causes a need to feed on fear rather than love. Fear and love are energetic fuel for life. So either you're feeding yourself through love, unconditional fabric of the universe, or you're feeding yourself on fear and there's a few reasons for that. A, a race can become so separate, it can get so lost in that separation, that void, that it stays locked in the lower dimensions and it must feed on denser energetics of fear in order to survive. It must find sources of fear to keep it running. And this leads to some very destructive behavior. So if you have to run your energetic on fear, 
and find that fuel, you have to manipulate reality in such a way that creates more of that fear. And, and this is kind of interesting. It gets to the point where source light is, is so weak that it has to feed on things that are already created. It's uh, that, that depth of fear is the absence of the ability to create. So you're not able to manifest things. You're, you're not able to create anything new. You can only manipulate what already exists. You must feed on things that are already created. And to add madness to mayhem, as these races of beings, which are just explorations of the depths of polarity and duality, the, the fear aspect of source, yeah, it, it wouldn't be there unless it was God's source. Let's be clear on that. This is all aspects of the creator. A, a parasitic energy entered our universe from a parallel universe. It's not even supposed to be here. And it came to our galaxy through Orion. And this parasitic structure is known as Archon. The Archons look like uh, they look like a parasite. It's like a single-celled type organism. Obviously, not a cell because it is a, a different uh, structure from the other universe. But Archons invade a being or a race, and they start to replicate fear within the host. So this is it's a deeply parasitic organism. The being that it invades isn't even aware of it until its behavior is changed to amplify survival and greed and power and, and domination. And archons infect entire races with this amplification of fear. And again, archonic energy is not something that, that creates fear. It's not imposing its will. It's just replicating a certain vibration within the being that it possesses. And even though these races are aware of the archonic presence, they choose to use the fear and the control to their advantage because ultimately, when all is said and done, a race that needs to feed on fear will eventually burn itself out. So if you're not creating, eventually you're going to run out of fuel and burn yourself out. Meanwhile, uh, these races destroy other planets and stars in energetic battles for their existence, sucking the energy of the system completely dry. Now, archons can be used in the takeover of planets. Archons themselves are not self-aware. It's a pure parasite. It just does one task, replicate the fear that already exists in a being, and this made for a perfect marriage when it came to the reptilian invasion of this planet. And I'm going to get to that in a second. So the... The reptilian desire to control and the archon amplification of that need created a, or, or rather sucked off of the, the amplified fear of beings on the planet and the structure itself. The reptilian race, just like humans, exist in more than one part of the galaxy. Let's just be clear on that. It's not like only Orion and let's go after Orion and obviously... Orion is full of many different beings and different races and not just reptilians, so let's not get uh, polarized about that. But let's be clear that not all reptilians either have explored the depths of destructive behavior, just as the ones who are here in and, and on the Earth, uh, just as not all humans that are on planets are exploring third and fourth dimension. Or, or fear or, or pain to live on a planet. There's a lot of planets with humans that are not, uh, not wrapped up in this, this particular experience, this particular game. Now, draconians are another race who struggled with archonic energy, but they used the Earth for, for their own ascension process a, a long, long time ago. In my opinion, they still have that domineering characteristic. <laughs> and wanted to rule this planet as well, and the battle between Drax and the Reptilians has been going on for a long time, and it appears now that the Reptilians are the last to surrender to the shift in consciousness altogether, which will eliminate their source of energetic food, so apparently they're going down kicking and screaming and taking as many with them as possible. It's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like a jealous boyfriend, you know. If I can't have her, no one will, and they're just in this kind of uh, fury 
of um, of lower emotions. And, and this is where all the anti-human agendas are based in our current experience. Now, in the past, Anunnaki and Niburians and Greys, Draconians did some damage to the human genome by turning off DNA strands and doing a lot of hybrid experimentation. And I don't, I don't want anyone to think if, if you haven't explored this topic at all, that it's all the reptilians' fault. That is absolutely untrue. The human experiment has been going on for a long time. This is walking in and out of beings. This is creating different kinds of DNA in order to uh, embody a certain frequency while you're on this planet. It's been spread throughout the universe. There, there are a lot of different expressions of the human genome. And even though it, it contains all of the codes for the universe, it didn't just pop into existence. It wasn't just created. There was a lot of experimentation, a lot of tweaking going on, a lot of manipulation, a lot of hybrid activity in the past, a lot of weird creations on this planet that are no longer here, um, and, and some of which <laughs> still are. But I, I don't in any way want to associate the downfall of humanity or the dissension of, of humanity um, on, on the reptilian agenda. It's just in the last couple hundred thousand years that this has just kind of been a, a, that timeline spiral that we were talking about that was headed toward, toward destruction uh, started to get picked up by the reptilians they just they're opportunists they're you know, as a parasite you see an opportunity and you go for it if your race is completely dependent on the energy of fear and you see an opportunity to to uh, manipulate an entire race that's that's suffering from drastic amnesia uh you know have at it so there there they are so that's what occurred so the uh, this turning off of the DNA strands and the and the hybridization and everything just reinforce the dimming down of humanity and the planet because the planet is also uh, interdependent on the consciousness which exists on it. So even after other races evolved and learned not to interfere with free will, the reptilians were still. Uh, making alliances with many races for certain trade-offs during this galactic battle that's been going on. And it's good to know that not all members of a race have the same intentions. There are varying degrees of love light in all races who have expressions in lower dimensions. I'm, I'm seeing six dimension and below in my perspective as where this varying degrees of, of separation occurs. And again, it's not an entire race of beings doing one thing together. Just as we we see in in this dimension, there is a lot of variation in individual free will playing out within a, a race. So let's not paint every reptilian with the with the same color. <laughs> so the the shift in consciousness is part of a larger galactic cleanup, which will rid all systems of our archons and these depths of fear. This universe is, is getting a reboot, so to speak. It's time to explore something new. But all energies that don't belong to this universe and don't belong here, and anything betraying the laws of this universe, especially free will, gotta go. They're being eliminated. And this is where we come in. <laughs> Our agreement with the replication, replication of fear is still a problem and and this is where a lot of people get hung up because they look at the external world and they say i did not agree to this and here's here's why that's that's untrue um we agreed to all of this not just on a collective let's have this crazy experience but there was a subtle and kind of sneaky hijacking of our free will and it was individual, which then becomes collective. And this, this little backdoor to the, the universal law of you must honor everyone's free will was, uh, was extremely subtle. And it happens, it's, it continues today. You are continuing to agree with certain structures in our, our 
day-to-day -day choices. And, and it's as small as garbage becomes okay to poison the planet. Throwing away a, a you know, ordering a, a large coffee at Starbucks with the paper cup and the plastic lid and then tossing it makes it okay on a grander scale to uh, deforest and and throw throw away everything to treat nature as if it's disposable to treat the planet as if it's disposable and you know it's it's as subtle as you know putting gas in your car and kind of throwing your hands up and going oh well until they make something else I guess we're just going to continue to have oil spills and continue all these you know silly wars over oil you know that's in quotes <laughs> um but when it, it but it starts on a very individual level and if an individual agrees that it's okay and procrastinates the 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 truth of it's not okay then you've they've they've got an in you, you've agreed to it and that started in a very small way and has been amplified and and picked up momentum and now we have entire collectives entire communities, entire continents <laughs> agreeing to these kinds of structures. And it's mm, it, even even when it comes to marketing, say marketing, you're, you're watching television, um, which I hope you're not. But if you're watching television and you see a commercial and you're like, oh, I, I should get that. I should need that. Anything that makes you feel like you're less than or you need to be something else that which is actually hatred of the self on on a deep level uh because you're just not okay you're not okay with who you are you want to be something else something better and something wanting to be something better when it comes to looks and material goods and things like that it agrees with the structure of I am not good enough, not worthy enough. I'm not good as I am. And again, that's a back door and the free will. That's you, you agreed to it. Yes, I am not enough. Yes, I can blame someone else for a problem. Yes, go ahead and start the war as long as I can drive my car. Yes, go ahead and tell me whatever you want on, on the, in, through the media and as long as I'm looking at the news or reading the paper and don't do anything, I've agreed to it. So your silence is your vote yes in a lot of these instances. And it seems, it seems unfair, but, uh, you know, this is, this is a battle. <laughs> so it's, uh, hmm. it's kind of interesting the way um, free will kind of got hijacked. And we do this all day long, our choices with food allowing our choices with, uh, do, do we want to buy a certain product? Well, it's another 30 minute wait if I have to go to that other store where they have stuff that's organic and not, not poisoning the planet or poisoning our kids, or I don't know what to do. I just need something convenient. I'm struggling doing the best I can. I'm allowing others to provide everything that, that goes into my body, that goes into my life. I'm not doing anything when you you see or hear that that horrible things are going on that makes it okay for it to continue we're kind of like tv trained to treat external events as as separate like it's not here then it's not my problem and then it becomes okay to go and kill and invade and destroy other cultures and other uh countries and other governments and people in in order for this structure to continue to kind of consume that that fear now how is war and violence related to fear well that's the the seed of it all is fear we don't go and and fight a war because we're brave and truthful that is in fact the exact opposite of what truth and wisdom is is fighting so so what are we doing here? We're agreeing to all of this. Every time that you 
look up at the sky and you see a, a chemtrail and do not make the phone call and do nothing about it and wait a, another day, another week, another month, another year for eventually somebody will do something, you're agreeing that that behavior is okay. And we just have to be aware of that because we, we tend to blame others, which is another um, another aspect of this this training is uh, we tend to blame others for the the problems that are exist on the planet and we really have nothing <laughs> no one to blame but ourselves so this because we're getting reactivated during the shift and that's the awakening phenomenon where your dna and your crystalline structures are being beginning to wake up that's that's why they call it awakening because these Structures that were dormant are now awakened. So we're becoming more powerful creators as our DNA and these crystalline structures start to activate. Our thoughts and our actions are constantly feeding the zero point field of consciousness. That's the, the collective mind which directs the collective reality for a, um, uh, for a group, for a planet. And when we're feeding the field, with these uh, manipulations of our planet and our civilizations, uh, they continue their energetic drain on Earth and on humanity. Now, I know that many believe that because they would never create a war or carry out a violent agenda, that the external world should not have war and violence. Well, these fear-based agendas, the war, violence, torture, control, manipulation, Greed, domination, sexual distortions, religion, power struggles, they're not going to magically dissipate, leaving all of humanity in harmonious peace, wiped clean of all distortions. It would be great if, if there were the, the magic frequency and all of these, these immense galactic cycles coming to a close in December magically transformed the entire planet. Um, but let's be responsible in the meantime, because we really have to learn this lesson if we're going to um, not just integrate some kind of harmonious behavior instantly overnight, if that happens, um, and, and I doubt it sincerely. I don't think that's the experience for everyone. But if we're, if we're going to start making these changes, especially as an as an awakened person even if you're listening and you have no idea what ascension is about and you were tuning in just to to listen to something about ascension this is part of the process of the awakening phenomenon and there are many levels to this process but one of them is taking responsibility for your thoughts and your behavior and when it comes to neutrality we, uh, we don't want to make everything none of our business. We want to get ourselves out of the state of war and conflict within in order to change the external world. As, as wonderful as a, a wiped clean harmonious world would be, just please take a look around you at the depths at, with, at which um, humanity is still exploring evil. Now, by evil, I mean fear-based behavior, the absence of love and oneness. And I, I should just touch on evil right now because I experienced that when I went to Indianapolis and went in the War, War Memorial, which is this giant, huge Masonic structure that is that anchors that ley line um, cross point in, in Indianapolis. And... Uh, again, you know, the, the Masons, the people sitting behind the table and probably the people paying dues have no idea what's going on. And they, they don't understand that their roots, the, the roots of that organization have been taken over by this dark structure. And they don't even understand where that comes from. And for the, for the men that do um, and remain in that structure, what, what are you doing? Anyway, so... I went into the War Memorial, and as you walk in, there's these giant pillars. I mean, just th this thing is way overblown huge. It's ginormous. And you walk in there, and it's got all of these pillars, these giant structures of, of you know, 10 feet in diameter, 
granite and marble and gold and it's it's very um it, it's just over the top huge you know symbols and stars and everything all over and the the pillars go up wow 30 40 50 feet i don't know it was just huge but it's extremely dark they keep it very dim and when i went in there there was just like this 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 wall the the this wall of energy just kind of hit me and not i don't want to say hit it wasn't it wasn't even attacking it was like the complete absence of love and what i felt there was that absolute separation from source absolute separation from wisdom which is ironic because the masons were all about keeping the wisdom at one point and and the light of truth uh and and to see what has happened there is really it's kind of sad but but when you were when i was in there it was um it's just it, it's that void that complete separation from anything that held any kind of unconditional love and the 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 fear that a lot of people associate with dark structures um it's i i almost wish that people could experience what that is like because the fear is that that they produce the, the fear that arconic energy uh, replicate within systems is is very different from that absolute uh, other end of the spectrum of of the, the other end of duality, the uh, absolute absence of love. That depth of of fear is uh, it's it's not even scary. It's just like oh wow, that is the complete absence of any kind of connection to source and it was i just wanted to share that with you because it was um it was uh it was very in- it was very interesting to experience that and i i couldn't stay in there very long you know i had, i attempted to um just kind of shine a, l- a little bit of light in there and then realized um that that was was not my job <laughs> i went outside and and sat in the sun next to the war memorial and did some light work because i just i couldn't even be in there i was like Mm-mm-mm. this this is part of something that is much much larger than um than what i had uh intended so so i did leave there um didn't you know run away or anything again it's very um it's very uh you know, you talk about dark agenda. It's just like, wow, that is what it's like to 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 be in complete separation. And then it it kind of makes the uh, the the chaos and the madness of the the fear that they pour into humanity and a- amplifying humanity. Um, it kind of puts it in perspective, like how nonsensical. Uh, humanity's fear is compared to something that we'll never be able to connect with uh, source creation until it is completely um, transformed back into pure consciousness just ceases to exist and and burns itself out altogether so um, that was that was I I kind of uh, I, I can't say it was sympathy, but I, de- I definitely felt um, like, oh, okay, I understand now. It's uh, it's <laughs> it's not as um, as goofy Star Wars as it appears to be sometimes. That that is very real. It's very real. Being being in a um, a, a race that has no possible way out outside of destruction of itself is um that that was that was interesting and interesting to to think of source creating that in order to experience what it was like to be completely separate from itself and when you feel that it's like wow okay now it it makes you understand um some of the the vast distortion and disharmony that are occurring on the planet you're like hmm okay that is really the the depths of of duality right there. Okay, um, <clears throat> so 
as the as the masters that we are, the human, that's God man, holding all the codes to this universe in our reawakening DNA, we must remember that our inner conflicts, the battles within our bodies, the, the battles with our bodies, jealousy, judgments, prejudices, money, sex, power, greed, all of that sends that conflict and fear into the collective field where it manifests larger structures of war and violence. It's just like the agreements. You agree to something really simple, not realizing that the outcome, when a lot of people are doing the same thing, is much larger. That's how it works. The manipulation of consciousness, this ongoing energetic drain via fear, is a battle over your heart. It's a battle over our heart consciousness. Our heart is 5,000 times more magnetic than the brain. So when a heart is attracting fear, it does a masterful job of fueling fear matrices. When you pair your our mastery as creators with, and this is, just go with me here. When you couple our mastery as creators with a lizard brain construct of survival, you get a, a powerful manifestation of fear energy feeding the field. And as we awaken from this, this mess, it's important to note that although that we have received a lot of off-world assistance with removing reptilian bases and thwarting efforts to begin World War III, it's still up to humanity to stop creating disharmony. Nobody's going to do that for us. And I love that it is up to us. I love that it is just us. All of this stuff gets taken away. And then it's like, okay, humanity, here you go. What are they doing? <laughs> you know, everyone's just waiting. It's like, okay, oh, they're still doing it. You know, what's going on? It's not like corporations are magically going to fold and then we're going to have all these abundant choices of things that are good and healthy for both humans and the planet that's up to us that's up to us yes we get a lot of help but depending on the help again depending on something else to do it for us is continuing that paradigm of giving the power away giving away the free will agreeing that you, it, somebody else is going to take care of it. Somebody else will provide. And that I, I love that is it's just us absolutely learning love again. And that no other race is going to do it for us. At last, we're completely responsible without any other influence to do as we choose. Our internal agreements with disharmony and control and something outside of ourselves being more powerful than we are is what keeps the conflicts going in the external world. That zero point time, this collapse of the linear illusion of time is perceived by a lot of us. We can see that time is changing, that we're getting back into that, that spiral of time, the natural timeline, the illusion is starting to fade. And that zero point time amplifies thought. It turns the mind on itself. It, it creates a more, in a more powerful way, whatever you're holding in your mind. So if you're having that internal conflict and turning that energy on yourself because of this time collapse, because all of a sudden zero point is, is like a big old mirror and it's just throwing it right back at you, you want to make sure that you don't have all of that conflict and 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 self-confidence issues and the doubts and the fears and the I'm not okay and I'm and, and if anybody thinks they're completely there you know strip naked stand in front of a mirror and don't judge anything and then walk around and don't judge anybody else and you know if you're if you really think that you're completely there Thank you. Please start amplifying the the, the love timeline as, as soon as possible. And it's not like you have to be completely clear in order to do that. But we want to make sure that because we're experiencing this amplification of thought, 
we we want to make sure that our thoughts are that we have to be very conscious with our consciousness. We have to be very focused. We have to learn how to focus. And that's very difficult for a lot of people to do. The the idea of simplicity this year is brilliant. That is I know you you hear it a lot and they're like simplify, simplify and it sounds like some hippie new age practice or something and and there's a reason for that it's because the the, the hippie new agers and we're not all created equal <laughs> we're, we're not all the same so let's not stereotype anybody but if you if you have to name a collective the shifters the metaphysicians uh, you know the light workers the way showers if you want to group all of us together, the reason why we're talking about simplicity is because we're trying to disconnect from these agreements that ev- everything is okay until it's not okay. And it's just, we see nothing but destruction and abuse for that outcome. Uh, there's a, nothing good can come of cutting down forests to, to make chopsticks. It's just, uh, it's just unwise, don't you think? It's just unwise. So the, this power of, of zero point time, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this amplification can be merciful. It can reveal the truth of love and it can also be very destructive and reveal deep fears that feed on themselves. That's a serpent eating its own tail. No progress, stagnation, end of creation, no more spiral. It's just doing the same thing over and over again. And that is also a side effect of having that that lizard brain, that that part of us that is reptilian, that continues habits as as safety, and that could be very destructive. And as the apocalypse, which is lifting of the veils of illusion to reveal the truth, unfolds in this zero point time, we create our unity or we create destruction. And nothing but unity will be tolerated as this universal galactic clearing progresses. So as we, we want to make sure that we're being very authentic when it comes to our thoughts, when it comes to ex- doing the self-examination and getting ourselves into a freedom from this archonic reptilian fear-based matrix enough it's not enough just to tweet about it or to say i know where it came from you got to do the work and that's that's something that's being revealed left and right if if people don't think that the veils are thinning because they they can't see the truth in other people then you have to realize that a lot of us do and when you see the the truth in other people and you see someone preaching about something that they believe to be true and not doing and not getting any of the personal individual stuff at all it's uh it's it's sad you know it's 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 not that sad that sounds like judgment but it's just it's just not it's not in alignment with what they would really like to create. And if they truly want to change and end all this war and violence, you gotta be, you gotta be like, like Occupy Wall Street. They're not waiting for Wall Street bankers to be taken out in handcuffs. They're not waiting for the financial collapse. They're sitting and being recognized. They're just there, they're like, I'm, I'm here and I see you. I'm here and I see you and I see the truth of what's going on. And you can see people breaking down around that structure. It's exposing political. It's exposing the police. It's exposing all these different things. And they're not fighting. They're not breaking windows or anything like that. They are merely saying, I see the truth. And that is what's occurring but unless you allow yourself to be seen unless you allow yourself to be heard and truly feel that you have ended those conflicts within yourself 
it's going to go on. You know, this can go on as, as long as we want it to. And as much as we would like to think that the 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 apocalyptic <laughs> cleansing of of lower denser disharmonious energies is only slated for a, a particular race or or a particular group like illuminati um there it it runs rampant in our uh, uh, many civilizations Many, I'm not going to say all, because obviously there's a lot of ancient cultures that still um, that still get it and have been keepers of that knowledge for a long time. It doesn't mean that they don't have an argument at the kitchen table once in a while, or have a you know a, a screaming match across the fire once in a while. But they're they're being authentic. They they understand that you don't let it escalate into something that it is not. You speak your peace. You speak your truth but you don't fester with it and let it turn on itself and create all of these disharmonious agreements where you've kind of given up on on love and given up that that is a, a possibility for yourself and that self-love is ending, clearing those internal conflicts while you take action to move our society toward love and where we'll all be able to experience the birth of the new earth and the new human existence. But it's up to each one of us to surrender the internal wars and violence and then help others to do the same. And you don't have to be in perfection before you do anything. Authenticity is saying, yes, I have conflicts and I'm working on them. How about you? Let's figure this out. Let's figure out how we can love ourselves. And you know what? I'm not going to put pressure on you to be anything that you're not. And you don't put any pressure on me to be anything that I'm not. And when you dissolve that judgment and you surrender the war, I know I talked about this last week, but when you surrender the fight, you stop fighting. Just walk away from it completely and realize the the oneness and the unity is already there and that is what we should be recognizing in each other not recognizing the the differences and the things that we don't like but rather agreeing with unity over agreeing with all of these destructive programs that are that are running right now that come from and let's trace it all the way back come from our agreement with a structure that was and, and many methods of controlling our consciousness and we agreed to it we agreed to it all day long let's recognize that instead of avoiding it let's be conscious with our choices you vote every time you buy something if you're okay with throwing everything away and I'm not saying you have to be the the lord of recycling or anything like that but um you know be conscious about this how how many times how long are we going to say it, it's okay because I don't know Trader Joe's just puts it in that package and then I can't recycle the package or whatever and uh, why not speak up we can we can change everything but if nobody says anything it just continues 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 if everybody made a phone call and every time they saw a chemtrail you can bet your bottom dollar that they would be exposed and and would not be this crazy conspiracy conspiracy thing that uh people don't understand and uh, you don't even have to understand it. You know, just, just call the airport, call the police, call the Coast Guard, call the military, call your representative, call the news and go, I've been watching these planes all day. I think someone's spraying us. And if you, if, you know, entire neighborhoods start calling and doing their own stories, forget, forget the news. They're, they're never going to do it. Do your own flyer. Do your own awareness. Eventually, that system's going to, have to answer but again the longer that you agree to something continuing the longer it continues 
It's just, it's that subtle. So we have to master our free will and, and choose what, what do I want to end? I'm going to end the conflicts within myself and then I'm going to start creating something that has to do with unity and love and oneness and, and get rid of this fear energy and this fear energy again fear exists in in this universe for a reason the separation game which is ending is duality it's it's just a construct to explore the opposite of what source is however this parallel universe energy made it a whole lot worse than anyone thought and as the universe you know decisions have been made to to get rid of that it doesn't belong here that other universe um where it came from which by the way i never want to go to that other universe universe that it came from it it never should have crossed over it never should have come in and unfortunately um some races were susceptible to that races that had made decisions earlier before that energy came in that um they were they were going to play the role of of exploring fear and and got themselves in a position where i mean the grays can't even experience emotion anymore they they went to the depths of of technology where your your body atrophies and you you just can't can't even use the physical in a normal way anymore and you know we've got all these races exploring all these different avenues of what separation is about and these different lessons and that i i know that's all it is but that doesn't mean that we should just uh give into it the part of this galactic battle that's going on is the arisement of the human genome to be restored to its original intention and even even though we we have so many predictions and we have so much information around how how quickly and in in galactic terms you know again a couple hundred years how quickly these structures are going to change not everyone is going to be able to walk into the fifth dimension um i'm telling you right now at the bottom of my heart i do not believe uh, that everybody is going to experience that and i know it's very hopeful for for a lot of people and and some some of the people that i counsel believe that they are walking through and that's that's fine that's fine to have that intention but but some people believe that all of this fear is going away i've been told all this fear is going away yeah but how long it's going to take and how weird it's going to be is up to us and whether or not you you want to walk through and ascend to that fifth dimensional frequency if the opportunity presents if things are in alignment if we have a high enough vibration on this planet because everyone has decided to give up the war within and create enough harmony where it will be possible to have micro wormholes open up in the universe and in your body and a perfect alignment and you are able to experience a fifth dimensional frequency that would be great i don't think it's going to be everyone and i don't think it's wise to abandon humanity or abandon the planet in hopes that you're you're leaving um and there are many ways to leave the planet again um uh, don't hope too hard to leave the planet um or you will create that for yourself and it might not be through ascension so just you know be careful but when it comes to connecting all of humanity back to where the he- human genome used to be that is that is a grand step in evolution and we're getting a great big 
boost during this time, but we have to take responsibility for the amount of fear that we are still agreeing to on the planet. And we agree to that right in our own hearts. So let's just take a look at that. It doesn't mean that you have to be afraid of archons or anything like that. It's just being aware that a lot of the distortions right within yourself are not even yours. And that doesn't mean blaming external. That means you believe that they're real. You agree to things. You agree to certain states of consciousness. And when we start to learn how to focus our consciousness and we start to learn how to not agree and take action and not be lazy about our existence, we're able to surrender to source instead of surrendering to whatever's happening in the external. And it, it's a little it, it's a little bit different. And, and I was battling the, the whole surrender idea um, just just this morning, I was I was wondering, you know, when does surrender feel like you're giving up? And that is the difference. It's surrendering to source and divine will, and then there's surrendering to what what other people are doing and what other races are doing. So let's make sure that we can tell the difference and discern the difference with our own hearts and ultimately that's all you need to get to know you don't have to be perfect you just have to get to know and be honest about what is going on with yourself and the outside world will start being honest about what's going on with itself i hope that this talk has been helpful if you have any questions send me an email my website is sandrawalter.com and I'm an Ascension Counselor, and if you would like a private session with me, please do so by booking through my website. And I hope you all have a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.